Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn about Docker. So for that, I'll be using my fast API to do app that I have created in my previous tutorial. If you want to have a look on it, I'll attach a link in the I button itself. Now, what is Docker and why do we need it? Uh, let's take an example that this application that I have created here is working on Mac OS properly, right? But there is a high probability that the same application will not work on Windows because we have multiple libraries and packages that may not support on Windows. So to avoid this situation, Docker comes in the picture. Docker isolates the application in one container along with its requirements. And this helps us running one particular application with same requirements in multiple operating systems or multiple machines, right? and we don't have to make changes anywhere that is why docker is important for us the other use case of this is that we have an organization where multiple people are using different operating systems and they are creating only one application and at the end this will go on server that is a linux machine right so for that also docker is important because it will dockerize the whole application and it will help us in the deployment process as well so this was the use case of docker i'll give you an overview of this fast api application and then we'll move on and dockerize this fast api app so in this fast api application we have all type of requests that is get put post and delete so yeah but we'll be using this get for the demonstration purpose so in this get request we are simply fetching all the entries having is deleted as false from our database and then we are giving the same as our response to the request. Now let's run this application and let's see what response we are getting on the browser itself. So for that we'll open our terminal and here I have already activated my environment. And we have command uvcon main is this file name here and app is this to do app that we are creating right of fast API. So we are simply calling this and reload is used for reloading the web page if we are making any changes in our main app, right? So let's run this command and see. Right, so this server is started. Let's go to our web browser and check this. So we'll simply paste our local host 8000 and check it. Let's pretty this. So we can see here that we have all our required data present here so this means that our server is working properly and it is sending the response as required so now let's go back to our vs code and write the docker file for same so now to dockerize this we have to create a file named docker file so we'll write here capital d docker file right so the first thing that we are going to write in docker file is what package we want in this or what will be the base for our application so here we are using python so we'll specify python and the version of the same so if you're using any specific version of python you can specify that but here i'll use the latest one so from python it will fetch this image and the version so latest so the next thing that we are going to pass here is work directory and work directory is something where we'll be having all our code present also suppose if your code is creating certain files so that will be also present in work directory itself so we can say it's a base for our application so we'll write here work dir and here we can simply write slash app you can put anything you can write slash code or your app name or anything so we'll just keep work dir for now and the next thing that we are going to do is copy the requirements file to this work directory so for that we'll write a copy command so copy and we want requirements file so requirements.txt to slash app right so this is going to copy this to the slash app here and after copying we also want to install all our packages so for installing packages we are going to run a command that is pip install and we don't want any cached packages to be used so we'll write here hyphen hyphen no cache right so it will not consider the cache directory and instead it is going to install all the packages from the scratch okay and after this we are going to pass hyphen upgrade as well 
so upgrade so this will upgrade any packages if the latest version is available and at the end we are going to write hyphen r and it is going to read it from the requirements.txt so we'll write that as well perfect so now we have a requirements.txt file and it will now pip will read it and it will install all the packages accordingly so let's have a look on it first so if we check our requirements.txt file so we have something around 15 uh, packages in it now suppose if you don't have this requirements.txt file you can create it in the shell itself so i'll show you how to do that so before that i'll clear this uh, shell and delete this file as well so we'll delete it right and for creating a requirements file we'll write here pip freeze right so if you see pip freeze it has listed all the libraries or packages that we are using along with their current version that is installed in our system okay but we don't have any file present here with requirements or text name right so for that we have to pass a greater than sign and then we'll write a requirements or text file right so this is going to create a requirements file and again we have our 15 libraries present as expected so let's go back to our docker file and complete it now we have copied the requirements file in our app but we don't have any of our code present there so let's copy all our code as well so we'll write here copy and in this we want to copy everything that is present so dot and we want to copy everything from the base directory where this docker file is present to our app so we'll simply write here slash app so at the end we'll run the command using which our server will work so we'll write here cmd and in this cmd we have to pass whole our command in as a list object so we'll write here uvcon and then we'll write our main app so main colon app and we'll then specify the host at which we want to run this so hyphen hyphen host and then we will specify the host so here it will be 0.0.0.0 and this will be in quotes and after this we also want to specify the port number at which this server will run so we'll then write here port comma and port number that is 80 for now okay we'll save this now let's go back to our terminal and create an image of this now to create image of docker file we have our command docker build and then we'll specify a tag using which we can uniquely identify our image so we'll write here hyphen t and then we'll name it as fast api and we want to take this docker file so at the end we'll write a dot so it will take docker file from the root directory so let's run this so it has started building up and i think it will take some time to create it so it's almost done right perfect so it is created so now let's write here docker images to verify the changes so we can see fast api is created nine seconds ago so our image is created as expected so now let's clear the terminal and run our server for that we'll write here docker run and in docker run we want to specify the port as well so we'll write here hyphen p and we want to run this on port 8080 this will be the external port at which our server is going to run and in image we have export port 80 so we'll write here the internal port that is 80 and then we'll specify the image name that is fast api let's press enter now we can see it has perfectly started and it is working on port 80 but as we have specified it to run on port 8080 so it will work on port 8080 let's go to our web browser and verify this change now we'll simply write here localhost and port 8080 right so now we get the same response that we have received when i gave a overview of the fast api so this means that this is working perfectly fine now and this is how we are going to dockerize our application but there is one problem now so if we make any change in our application it is not going to reflect here because now let's do one thing we'll modify our fast api main app and see if that change is reflecting at this port or not so we'll go back to our vs code and modify it so here let's go to our main app 
and inside main instead of returning this let's return a dictionary and in that dictionary we'll also add a message here so we can write message and we'll specify to do entries and this will be in data format comma and to this we'll specify as data so we'll write here data right and we'll save this and we'll again go back to our web browser and see whether these changes are reflecting there or not so we'll go here and we'll refresh this page and we'll do this pretty print but as we can see we are not getting the latest data that we have changed but here is one problem that if we make any modification in our code it is not going to reflect in this app because the image that is created has our previous code so to handle this situation we have docker compose in picture so we'll write another file name as docker compose which is going to create an image and it will keep constantly updating it if we have modified anything in our app as well so let's go back and write the docker compose file as well so let's create a new file named docker compose docker hyphen compose and this will be a yaml file right and we will save this correct so the first thing that we have to write here is the services so we'll write here services and inside services we want to specify the name of our app so here let's write fast api and we can write to do as well so fast api to do so inside this will define what are its configurations so the first thing that we want to do here is build and inside build will simply write dot so it will take this docker file to update and after this we'll specify the command so command and in this command we'll write uvcon main app and then we'll specify the host so host and this is 0, 0, 0, 0, right and port as well so port is again let's this time let's keep it as 8090 and again here we'll write 80 so it will take internal port 80 and 8090 will be the external port using which we can fetch it on browser so after this we also have to specify reload so we'll write here hyphen hyphen reload now along with this we also have to specify the ports here as well so ports and in this we'll write port 8090 and to port 80 and after ports we want to specify the volume so this is the volume that takes this whole code so that means we want all code so we'll write here dot and we want to copy it to slash app so slash app so this will create our docker image okay we'll save this file so let's go back to our terminal and we'll close this thing so simply command c and clear it we have to build this as well so we'll write here docker compose and then we want to so to come now the command to run this docker compose file is docker compose and after this we'll also build this for the first time so we'll specify build and then press enter so it has again started to build the application so it has now successfully created the application it has built it okay so my bad i have passed port as 8090 so we have to modify it so we'll go back to our docker compose and we'll write here 80 only right and we'll save this file and rerun this code so clear it first and rerun this perfect so this time it has again created the image and after creating it it has started the server as well we can see that this is running at port 80 right so but we have exposed it at port 8090 so let's go back to our web browser and verify at port 8090 so this is 8080 we'll copy this and create another tab and here we'll specify port 8090 okay and here we can see that we have this message that we have modified and there is data as well now let's go back and revert this change and see if this docker compose is working as expected or not so we'll go back to our code and here we'll modify this main pie again so we'll just revert all the changes that we have done here right and save this and after saving if we go back to our terminal we see that it has again restarted it right so it says stat reload detected changes in main pi so reloading 
right so it has reloaded our app so let's go back to our web browser and verify the changes so we'll refresh this this is port 8090 and after refreshing we can see that that message thing has been removed and it is giving the result as the previous one so now we can see that docker compose is working as expected now let's go back to our terminal and we will learn few more commands of docker for that will be used in our day-to-day -day work so we'll now close this so we have killed this we'll clear this and we'll see few commands that we have to use in our day-to-day -day work life so the first thing that we have is docker ps so this docker ps will list on all the running images or running containers so it will show the container id to demonstrate this i'll run one image so i'll open another terminal here and in this terminal i'll simply rerun this command and we'll then verify it on this right so now if we write here docker ps so we can see it has created this fast api to do right so this is our app and it is working on this particular command it is not showing the full command because the length is larger so it has trimmed the command here and if you see it is created six seconds ago and status is up less than a second so it tells all the information about that particular image that when it was created and from how long it is being used so so the next command that we are going to use is docker attach so we'll write here docker attach and after this we'll copy this name from here or we can also copy the container id so i'll copy this container id and then paste it here now after running this particular command it will show all the logs that we are printing here so now if i go back to our web page and refresh it few times right and i come back so here i can see all the latest logs are printed here so this docker attach is used for logging our system now at times we also want to so this has killed this container as well so we can write here docker compose up so when we are using this docker compose up it has simply initiated this container and it has not built the image again so this is another helpful command of docker now if we clear this terminal now again we'll write docker ps so the next command that we are going to see is docker exec so docker exec will take us to the container and we can check the live container and its files we'll copy this container id from here and the command for getting inside the container is docker execute so docker exec and hyphen it which is interactive terminal and then we'll paste this container id and after this at the end we'll write here slash bin and slash bash so this will take us inside the app okay and if you write ls we can see all our docker file pycache configuration and etc are present inside this particular directory which is slash app so this is how we can get inside the container and perform all our required operations i hope you have learned all the basics of docker and now you can successfully create your docker application so if this video has helped you out don't forget to hit the like button and also do subscribe to my channel thanks for watching